everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Ray. Today we're going to be doing some more bead embroidery and I'll put a eye card up here so that you can see um, the unboxing of this kit. We're going to be working on it a little bit today and just doing my normal whip and chat. Um, so I'm just going to get started. Things might get a little bit shaky it's okay we will get through it and try to get you the best possible lighting as well how are you doing today <laughs> I have had a very like chaotic day so we'll see where this goes but some details I got this from Amazon from all about embroidery UA uh, the US Amazon the US Amazon store may be out of stock on this check her Etsy shop see if you could find it there she has uh, oh sorry not Etsy eBay she has an eBay as well uh, I'm going to be using this needle minder or cover minder that's actually a resin cauldron as you can see I got this in a in a kit or a, a box from last year um, I believe from the Black Needle Society I'm not sure um, can't remember now, sorry. But this has a well in it, and I've put some super strong sticky tape inside, and I'm going to put the cover in a diamond painting tray so I don't lose it, so that we can then pick a color and, uh, and get stitching. Uh, I showed this last time, but there's a key here. It's called Rainbow Fractal. It's a 41 by 41 with 14 colors. Uh, the one that I'm going to be working on next, I believe, is the number 8. Or is it? It's a purple. Hmm. Bead symbol. See how they have different colors? I'm going to double check. And I can do that by unscrolling the bottom, which really didn't want to do, but I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've just learned that the printout isn't the same color necessarily uh, as the bottom here. This is what the bottom looks like. So I'm going to make a note of this on the piece of paper um, as to what colors they should be. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, just wanted you to be able to see what it looks like. Uh, now that I've put the scroll frame in like this, I can actually access the numbers uh, when I need to. And then I'm gonna roll just like this, making sure to apply even pressure and to keep that keep the fabric even all the way around as much as possible so that when we get close to being taut that it looks even all along and then I just tighten as much as I can and then I go for the knobs on the side which you can't see me doing you can hear it but it's um tightening just tightening the side knobs and this is my Elon master scroll set so if you're looking for that I'll have that linked down below so you can check it out so we're good now I know what number I'm working on um, this second row right here is the number 10 just beautiful matte purple bead. So now I gotta make sure that you're gonna be able to see what we're doing here. As we're doing it, I'm gonna pour some beads onto this sticky tape. As many as I can fit, really. And see how they just stay on that tape? It's wonderful. Uh, I read some of your comments from the unboxing video and I saw a lot of you talking about using pin stitch but I'm just I'm a little bit confused is all 
I'm a little confused on how to do that on this fabric. It seems, it seems a little difficult. Okay, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to do it, but I really don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna go and hold, holding the back and going like from the top to the middle. Is this what you would do? Kind of like, kind of like what you do when you do a cross stitch. I don't think that's gonna hold it. I've put a temporary knot just just in case, so I don't, I don't really know if that's, that does not sound secure to me in theory, so yeah, I'm not so sure about that, but let's get the bead on there and then go under. So I decided to break out the scroll frame for this because, well, first of all, because it recommends it. They do recommend a scroll frame instead of like a Q-snap because you don't want to hurt the, um, you don't want to hurt the design at all, this printed layer. And a hoop or a Q-snap would absolutely destroy it, so we don't want that. I was on... Amazon and I saw this there's a kind of a what you call it a tool out there called a tambour needle and so I went ahead and purchased one it's it's gonna take a while to get here but hey you never know um, it could it could be helpful basically it's kind of like a crochet hook but for beading so you would add, oh, see, you would add all of the beads to the needle and then you go in and out of the fabric one bead at a time. I think it would make it a lot faster once you get the hang of that. Also, I had a few people telling me to try and go back through all of the beads and make sure that they are straight. So I'm gonna try that now before I forget. So I'm gonna come up. On the first side. Oh, I don't think I can do this actually from the top. Crikey. Yeah, see my needle won't go. Can I go from this side? No, the angle's wrong. All right, folks. I think the top ones are just going to have to be a little wonky. Um, but it's okay. I think they're fine. I think they're fine. I'm, I'm not worried about how they're sitting, really. But anyway, that's enough about this. I hope if you have any questions, oops. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave them in a comment. I've been getting better at answering comments this week. Having a having a good week so far. Aside from this morning on Twitch, I had a lot of technical if difficulties, which seems to be happening a lot more now that I have my my new computer. So that's that's kind of frustrating. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but hey, you know, I guess it happens to everybody, right? Um, it's a really nasty day out there. It's raining. It's windy. In a way, it's kind of cozy, do you know? But also in another kind of way, I'm just, I'm over it. I'm over it already. I don't... Ow. Ow, that needle sharp. Um, I don't... I don't like this part of spring. <laughs> 
I don't like the wet part of spring. I like the dry part, but that's coming soon too. So it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Um, let's see. I really enjoyed the response to this new craft that you all seem to really enjoy looking at. And you know what? It's, it's a really pretty thing. Um, and I do think that it's relatively quick compared to my other project. So this one actually has the um, possibility of being finished within my lifetime. A lot of you were asking me about my other beaded cross stitch. Oops. That's going to happen a lot, isn't it? Um, a lot of you were asking about the beaded cross stitch kit that I got uh, a few years ago. That is in my closet. I have considered de-stashing it. I have considered um, throwing it away. Um, it's very frustrating, but I keep going back and forth on how I feel about it. I feel very lucky to have one. I think they're hard to find now. Beaded cross stitch, full cross stitch kits. Um, but they're very difficult to do. It's not, beading is not easy. Beading is very difficult. So, you know, when you, um, where do I put this? When I was in high school, I had an embroidered dress for my junior prom. Oh, it was so beautiful. If I have a picture, I'll throw it in here, but it was a lavender gown. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you know me, you know I love purple. Lavender gown. And it had all of this embellishment, loads of beads and sequins and everything that were kind of cascading from the bust down. Um, I felt like such a princess. It was beautiful. Um, but yeah, just imagining trying to do that level of beading by hand nearly panic inducing <laughs> not gonna lie it's kind of crazy but um this kind of thing this is doable in small chunks right have you ever embroidered on a dress before or on clothing before I would really love to know I think it's just so cool so I thought what we would do today on this is to um, follow the purple. I could, like, I could go up to this teal and then go to the green and everything, but I think I want to follow the color on this piece. And I think, oh, let me go back down. It's difficult because you've, you might leave a little mark, but um, I'll try to straighten these up a little bit. Go through some of them. And then go down. Like that. Is that what you mean? And then I'm going to come up over here. I'm going to try to get through... Yeah, go through here. So one, two, three, four. Like this. Can I get it in? Ooh, no, I can't. I'm not going to try. <laughs> Is this interesting? <laughs> Someone also mentioned that you can like link them together, but I'm not gonna. If you know me, you know that I like easy, right? I know that it doesn't seem like it sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I can do things that make people wonder, but yeah. Okay, quickly, before before I lose you to chores or, you know, adulting or whatever. There's a raffle going on. 
I have created a, a raffle to raise money for Four Paws International, which is a like an animal rescue sanctuary nonprofit. And they are using the money that's raised to help animal shelters in the Ukraine right now. And I thought that it would be great to to donate money to them. And I was thinking, well, wouldn't it be great if I could give stuff away, you know, to, as an incentive for people to participate and to raise money for the animals. So I am, I've got three prizes for the winners of the raffle. We've got the finished cross stitch piece that I did. It says Seek Peace and Pursue It um, by Aya Rosen. Uh-oh, hang on, let me go back down. I gotta fix that. That one does look a bit wonky, so let's fix that one. Let's go back up through the top. I'm gonna go slightly in like this slightly in from where I started. I'm not gonna, oops, sorry. I'm so sorry. I probably just made a bunch of you sick. I apologize. Or maybe you're not looking at the screen. That's probably the best way is just to listen, <laughs> right? Uh, okay, I got the cross stitch. It's finished. I've got the Scooby-Doo Where Are You diamond painting that I'll sign. And then we have a mystery box of diamond painting accessories from Mrs. Crochet and Coffee. Uh, I was asked, how are the winners determined? And that is through the raffle website itself. So on Saturday of this week, if you're watching, today is the 16th of March uh, that you're watching this. If it Well, that it's put out into the internet. So um, the day I'm recording is the day before, of course. But... If you're watching right after, you know, Patty's Day, um, it is this Saturday at 11 a.m. GMT, which is, what is that, like 5 a.m. Eastern or something? No, 6 a.m. Eastern on Saturday. Saturday. And the winners will be automatically chosen by the Rappel website. Then I will contact you. Uh, through the details that you've given because you have to make an account and I did get a comment about that as well they were saying you know oh so I have to make an account to participate you do I don't think that I'd be able to do it any other way so I, I'm using the website because if I used a Google form or if I tried to use Facebook or PayPal it would just turn into a hot mess real fast. So I tried to find the most reputable raffle website that I could. So that's why I'm using that. That's why you have to sign up for an account so that I can get your contact details if you win. And then I will send your prize. You don't have to pay shipping. It's just the amount that you want to buy. However many raffle tickets you feel like buying. Um... And yeah, if you feel like donating to other charities, I welcome you to do that. Uh, but this is just to make a purchase on the raffle website, right? You buy the tickets through the raffle website. When the raffle is over, I'll contact the winners and I'm going to immediately donate 100% of what we raise. I'm aiming to sell all the tickets, if possible, which would give us 500 British pounds to, to donate to Four Paws International. And of course, I'll be transparent. I'm gonna show you my email where I send off the money and everything. So don't worry, I'm gonna, I will be 100% clear with everybody. You know I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do it any other way, right? So. I'm super excited about that. I love helping the animals. Um, 
it was it was the the best option that I could find. I'm sure that there are other options out there as well. Did I did I go through them again? No, I didn't. Um I'm sure there's other places to donate to. I mean, I donated to Sirius, which is a shelter that I saw in Kiev. All right, come on. Go all the way through. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I did it all the way. Yay, I'm learning. So. Come on, get down there. But we've got, so big news, we've actually got about 200 refugees coming to our town, which is fantastic. It's really good. We need, we need more families here anyway, but you know, I hope that they find some peace here. Um, and a, a big welcome from our community. Um, this place is really safe, you know, so I think it's going to be great for them and for us, you know. Uh, if you didn't know, I live, I live in a really rural town in the west of Ireland, southwest, and it's very, like, we just got demoted from town status to village because we fell under a thousand people. So hopefully this will bring us back up. We could be listed as a town again. We could bring in jobs, have have talented people, have doctors and chefs and, you know, the whole lot. We, we need more people to make, to make it feel alive again. It kind of feels, kind of feels empty sometimes, you know, but anyway, anyway, uh, I just wanted to share that good news with everybody that, uh, I saw a headline this morning saying that about 800,000 refugees are expected to come in to Ireland, Ireland this month or have come in. I might have read that wrong. Sorry. But either way, the ease response has been brilliant and um, makes me feel a little less little less stressed. I try not to read the news too often though because there is a lot of um, what ifs or if thens or you know things like that and that's where my mental health can kind of get lost <laughs> and I fall into a hole of overthinking so I'm trying not to do that I'm trying to limit myself on that front, you know, and therapy is going really well. I had therapy again on Monday. Um, it's really not as scary as I thought it would be, but it is difficult. I just, I realized that I'm at the right place. I, I really need to prioritize this. And I keep saying, you know, it's, if it's, if it's not just for me, then it's also for my friends and my family and, you know, everyone around me, because how you're feeling affects everyone in some small way, right? It affects how you relate to people and how you interact with people. And so for me, it was just time because I had been slipping into feeling like I was getting agoraphobic. I didn't want to go out and I didn't want to see people. Um, um, and it wasn't just a COVID thing. Do you know what I mean? Like it wasn't like, oh yeah, I don't, I don't want to go out because I don't want to be near people and potentially get sick. No, 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 no. This is like, I don't want to see people because I'm afraid of having a conversation with someone 
I'm afraid of what I might say. That's where, that's where I have been for a little while. And, um, yeah, I don't recommend it. I don't, I don't think it's a great place. Hang on a second. I'm going to get some water. Wow. Look at how quickly this is going. <laughs> like this is going so fast. So yeah, if you, if you're on the fence about talking to someone, maybe, maybe try, that was Luna, maybe try online counseling. Cause I'm thinking about doing that as well. Right now I'm doing, I'm doing a different type of therapy that is, um, specifically designed to help people with PTSD. And getting them to open up about things that might, you know, they might not otherwise think about and to process the emotions behind it. And I have to say that the first session that I had of this particular method was, um, it rocked me a bit. I didn't, I didn't expect to have the full scale reaction that I did, but it was really helpful. Um, I don't really talk about it much and I don't want to get into it here, but, um, maybe I will on my, on my Patreon blog a little bit, a little bit, but not a lot. Um, I'm, <clears throat> I had a lot of uh, trauma as a kid. Like I, there was, there were a lot of good things about my childhood. There were, there were, um, but I had to endure and see a lot of things that I didn't, that no, no child should have to go through. And I'm not talking about just a simple punishment. So, um, I was taken out of that situation. But even, even the, I don't know, it wasn't, you know, it's, we're not here to compare, right? Okay. First of all, I'm not here to compare. Uh, my, my childhood trauma is just as valid as someone else's. And I'm trying to work through it. That's, I'm getting defensive because I feel like a part of me feels like, it's not as bad as other people have it, but I'm trying to tell myself that no, it actually, it is valid. And this has been sitting inside of me for a very long time. And it's just that over, you know, once I came to adulthood, I had to start, I had to stop being a child and start, you know, being more responsible, but there was a part of me that is, there's still a part of me that's the child. Um, and, and I got to heal, I got to heal what, what happened and heal, heal that child. And that sounds a little bit, I don't know, maybe I'm not explaining it right. I'm not, I'm not a therapist. Okay. <laughs> I, I know that I campaign for mental health and that I, I want to show people that you can use art and craft as, as a method for bringing you through something. It is so helpful, but what I, what I'm trying to get at is I really would love it if, if you are even contemplating If you're feeling, if you're feeling things that are, are not normal, not, not good, and you haven't spoken to somebody, please go talk to someone. There are people out there who are non-judgmental and literally their only focus is to help you. And for a really long time, I felt like I was taking away from other people who needed it more than me. And so I just let myself continue to get damaged and it's not good because it just makes it worse. It makes it harder to process. 
So yeah, anyhow, it's going well. <laughs> it is, it's going well. Uh, I gave up going through all the beads. <laughs> I think they look good though. I do, I think they look great. The lines are supposed to be a little bit jagged and stuff anyway, right? So who cares? Not me and it's mine. Oh, somebody asked me how I'm going to, what I'm going to do when I'm finished with it, which is a little premature, I think, but, um, valid. I think I'm going to frame it without glass. Or if I can find some, what do they call it? Like UV protected glass or plastic or whatever it is that keeps things from fading. Cause I really don't want it to fade. All right, can I make it up here? Mm, maybe for one bead. I'm gonna give myself plenty of room to, to put that in. All right, now how to end this. So let me put this on the magnet. Where's the magnet? Hello, there you are. And then we flip this over. Oh, maybe that's not a good idea. Well, we'll find the beads that way, right? Maybe not. Okay, I'm gonna pause. <laughs> and we are back. So, I actually had to take a break and I needed to eat some lunch. I thought that might be a good idea since, you know, it's, it's important. <laughs> it's important not to skip meals. Okay. Um, it's something that I've been trying to instill in myself lately as well, because I don't know about you, but I often forget to eat, especially when I am alone, like on my own at home. So yeah, if you haven't eaten anything, this is your sign. Go, go get something. Even if it's just a snack. I had some leftovers. I had a, we went and got curry after my appointment yesterday. So I had some leftovers cause I could not finish it last night. And, oh, I am already out of practice. So yes, uh, it was lovely. It's chicken passanda, which is like a, an almond based curry. Uh, these days I don't like my curries so spicy. I used to love spicy curries. And I just realized that this actually splits off. <laughs> um, and I'm going to need to do that side as well. But anyhow, yeah, curry is my favorite. I always get the pasanda these days and I love getting... Pilau rice and um, can't get my words out and garlic naan, garlic naan, pilau rice. Oh, so good. Um, I also got the sag paneer. If you don't know, pan paneer is a kind of a cheese. It's like a hard cheese, almost like squeaky cheese, but not quite. I'm going to actually bring bring up the thread this time as well and straighten those up a little bit. Um, so yeah, we had curry last night um, and then I played some Animal Crossing, which I really want to do today because it's a rainy, a really rainy day. It's so soggy now. It wasn't like this when I first started the whip and chat, it was dreary, you know, in that kind of a, sorry, it's shaking, in that kind of a, you know, spring and you kind of expect it, but now it's just full on puddles of rain. So I think we're going to, we forgot about the non last night. So I think we're going to have a curry again tonight. And I really like, uh, potato and spinach so I guess that would be sagaloo 
I believe that's what it's called, Sagalu, because alu means potato and sag is spinach. I think I'm right about that, I don't know. Um, but it's really yummy and really easy. And I learned something, so I've been watching TikTok. And I know that like some people are like, oh, TikTok's for, for young kids or whatever. But actually, I've learned a lot of stuff on TikTok. And one of the things that I came across was this woman who just, you know, shows how she cooks things. And you know when you meet somebody who has so much experience, like, she must be, you know, cooking for decades, and she's so good that it makes me want to try, and I, if you've been here for a while, you know that I don't like to cook, okay? <laughs> like, I really don't like cooking that much. Can I tighten? I can tighten. Okay. Um, so because I don't, I don't really enjoy cooking, um, all that often, I tend to stay away from it. And I just let my husband cook because he is a much better cook than I am. But she showed how she stores her spices. And I'd be curious to hear how you do it. Because I kind of grew up where we had a spice cabinet and, you know, you've got like <laughs> hundreds of little glass bottles, basically. And they used to, they used to just sit in there, honestly. Um, I think we used a lot of spices when I was younger, but then um, as the years went on and you know, they were working harder and harder, my grandparents, that um, they had less and less time to cook. So, well, my grandmother, sorry, my grandfather never cooked unless it was barbecue on the grill. Um, he was in charge of barbecuing, but anyhow, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to need a stronger magnet on that because it keeps wanting to come off. Um, yeah, we had a, we had a spice cabinet and it was full of all these spices that really didn't get used all that often. And this lady whose video I watched, she had basically an old biscuit tin or, a, or we call it a cookie tin that had these ramekins in it or like, um, metal, little metal circular containers within the cookie jar cookie not cookie jar cookie tin and those held different spices but there was a lot of them so you know you'd have your um turmeric garam masala um garlic powder chili peppers you know that kind of thing and I just remember seeing that and immediately it just clicked and I was like that is the best way of holding spices I've ever seen. You can buy spices in bulk and then you can just use, get little teaspoons and keep them in the biscuit tin, put the lid on when you're done and put it away. And you don't have to have all these tiny glass bottles where the spices run out really quickly on those, you know? So yeah, I, I just, I had like a, an aha moment <laughs> the other day when I saw that. So I'd be, I'd be interested to hear how, how you store your spices. Do you do something similar? Is this something that like, I just, I should have learned? Maybe I could have been, I don't know, educated on? It feels like it's way easier and then you don't have less cleanup, you know? So yeah, let me know in a comment. That's, that's the video question of the day, I guess. Um, so yeah. And then, okay. So let's talk about what's going on this week. So tomorrow, as you're watching this Thursday is, uh, is St. Patrick's day. Woohoo. Um, where everyone is Irish. <laughs> um, and I'm not going to go out. So 
there's a part of me that's struggling with this, but I, I'm, I'm getting better or getting better. I'm feeling more okay with it is that I don't want to ruin my trip to Germany. So if you don't know, I'm going to go and visit my friend Heike in Germany. And it's coming up in just a few weeks. So I really don't... Oh, Lynn, are you okay? She's got a cough. Yeah, you're okay. Um, the... The trip is in just a few weeks, and I don't want to run the risk of getting sick, okay? So I don't want to be out in public spaces. Now that the mask mandate has been lifted, I really feel like Christmas Part 2 could happen. So over the Christmas period, um, we only went out twice, but we, James and I both managed to contract COVID. Um, and literally all we did was have a few pints outside with some friends. But Omicron is, was so, I mean, I, I'm sure that we still have Omicron as well. But this variant was so contagious that we we even got it just being outside and not being close to people. Uh, we're not sure if maybe one of our family members had it and that's how we got it. But anyway, cause you know, one of us did have it first, but anyway, we don't, we don't know how it happened and it's nobody's fault. Okay. But, um, I could just see that happening again really easily. So I want to vo avoid that. And even though I really would love to meet up with friends and, you know, have a good weekend I feel like I have a bigger priority, <laughs> so um, I'm going to try to have a kind of a celebration over on Twitch. So you're more than welcome to visit me on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Rachel Ray Craft. You don't have to sign up or anything and you don't have to subscribe because subscriptions there are like monthly, you know. Um, so I'm not asking anybody to do that, but if you would like some company... You can feel free to like lurk and work as well. I won't call you out. I just, I appreciate anybody who wants to spend time. I'm going to be cross stitching and um, probably playing some video games if I can manage it. Um, just, just to spend some time together. And also uh, my community over there, they actually... They actually did this community challenge where they contributed some points and things that they had gotten. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Twitch, it doesn't really, you know, don't worry about this part. Okay. But, but what ended up happening was that people were so supportive that they, they did this little thing. And now James is going to be on the live stream with me for a little while. And he's going to do the spicy noodle challenge. So if you remember, I posted a, I posted a video of me doing the spicy noodle challenge to YouTube a little, well, I guess it was a few months ago, um, just for fun, just for fun. I love spicy things and so does James. So it's going to be, it's going to be funny. <laughs> I think, I think you would really enjoy it if you want to just come hang out with us. Everybody over there is really welcoming and warm and lovely, so you are definitely among friends. I'm just going to do four at a time because it's not supposed to be completely straight, I don't think. Let's go. Let me put this down in between. There we go. And then I'll come back up through the top here. Okay, I just made a really big noise, so I cut it out because I did not mean to hit the um, the camera arm. Goodness, that completely threw me off, too. <laughs> I was like, what? All right, there we go. 
This is really coming along. I like it a lot. What do you think? Hopefully one of these will come back in stock soon if you didn't get one. But I wouldn't be holding my breath either. I mean, they are in a crisis situation. Um, but if you have been holding out on working on a beaded embroidery, maybe this is, uh, this is your sign to work on it. It's quite relaxing, I have to say. And now that I'm in the groove of it, I feel like I could do this much faster, especially if I'm not filming. <laughs> because um, this is at a really odd angle. It's good for filming, good for the lighting so that you can see. But it's definitely not easy on my back and my arms. So um, I feel like I might, I might, I might work on this a little bit more. It's got lovely colors in it. It's making me happy. Um, I haven't worked on my Zen Moss Garden Chatelaine this week yet. I haven't really felt the pull. It hasn't, it's not sunny today, so I probably won't be working on it today. But yeah, I might just throw in some videos here. Sit back and relax with a little bit. Maybe, maybe even like just put on a movie or something. Just enjoy zoning out into this beautiful little fractal world that's being, that's being made over here. So what are your plans? What are you going to do this weekend? I think I might Zoom with some friends and take it easy, maybe play some games with my husband and try to just take my mind off of being a big holiday, do you know? They've actually made it a holiday now, like as in on Friday, people that work, you know, for the government, they don't have to go to work on Friday. And next year, they're going to do that for um, St. Bridget's Day as well. Which is so fascinating. But James James is adamant that he wants to get back to Theory Tuesday just as soon as possible. So fingers crossed for that. And yeah, I don't know. I don't think there's anything else that I can catch you up on. The chickens are doing just fine. Luna is just fine. We did a big W-A-L-K yesterday. And that was great. Um, well, James had his interview. And it went so well. And oh, that was just, that was a really, that was a weight off of his shoulders. And I am so proud of him. Um, and then Easter's coming up next month. It's so bizarre to me that, like, time is just moving so quickly. So, so quickly. We are, we are at the end of quarter one. If you think of the year in four parts, we are almost finished with the first quarter of the year, which means that quarter two is coming and quarter two is really fun. I love, I love April, May, and June. It's fabulous. So, yeah, just really... Really looking forward to it. Um, I've got this uh, meeting Heike in Germany in April. And then at the end of May, I'm going to the UK as well. Um, and it's going to be fantastic. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to a music festival. I haven't been to a music festival since 2017, I think. So I'm just super stoked. It's going to be like, I don't want to give too much information, but it's older bands. Um, I wouldn't call them has, has bands. I'd call them more like legends, but, um, I'll definitely tell you more about it afterwards. That's for sure. But it should be, it should be a really good time with a good friend of mine. And we're going to share like a camping area 
yeah, we're camping. I know me and camping is never, never really a thing, but I might bring some knitting, but uh, nothing too, nothing too elaborate. <laughs> Maybe like a sock, but I doubt I'll even have a chance to break that out, to be honest. I will be too involved in just being in the moment, and that's for a week. So yeah, it's gonna be fabulous. Are you, do you have anything you're looking forward to? I would love to hear about it. I love hearing what you're up to and all that. It really makes my day just reading your comments. So thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Ooh, 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 I lost a bead. Where did you go? Eh, I'll find you later. So yeah. Oh, come back here. So that's it really, everybody. I think, I think that's all I have today. That's all I have in me. Uh, I'll get this video ready to go up so that you can enjoy it. It was nice catching up with you. Nothing too exciting to report other than my technical difficulties. Ugh, <laughs> those are always a pain. <laughs> Um, but thanks so much for, for hanging out. If you would like to see more behind the scenes stuff with me, I welcome you to join my Patreon. I have a tier on my Patreon where you can support me at a level where you can see my weekly vlog. I update pretty much daily and I make it into a one week long vlog every single week. It's a great way to get to know me better, um, get to see my home life and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Maybe, maybe, um, you know, it would be interesting to some of you. I don't know. Um, but it is available and I would appreciate it if you considered it. Um, especially now that I've kind of, I've kind of leaned back on YouTube a little, um, kind of, kind of taken a little bit of a siesta from go, go, going with diamond painting content and, um, you know, crafts are swings and roundabouts and sometimes we get involved in a craft for a little while and then we kind of lose interest for a little bit and then it comes back later. That's kind of how I feel, but, but I will have you know that I did, I have been diamond painting every single day to get this kimono finished. Kimono, the, the diamond painting from Diamond Shop. So I do, I do have plans to have that finished as soon as possible. And I'm kind of proud of myself that I've been sticking with it because it, it was so nearly finished as well. I had to take a break from that um, Diamond Art Club mystery kit because it was just very Christmassy. And I'm not in the Christmas mood at all right now. But maybe, maybe in the summer when I need to cool off, right? <laughs> I'm sure somebody will have a diamond painting event for that. So anyhow, everybody, thank you so much. I'm gonna show you from out here a little bit. There we go. Oh, you can see even more. Look at all of that beading that needs to be done, right? It's so pretty. There's kimono in the background. It's so, so pretty. So I'm gonna keep working on this. I hope that you all have a wonderful day, that you take care and stay safe, especially during the Patty's Day weekend and keep my festive nails on. <laughs> I hope that you all have a wonderful week ahead and a great weekend, and I will see you all soon for my next video, probably Friday. Take care and stay safe. Bye! <laughs>